The Mordecaisers, translated to High Gothic as Murder Lords, are a successor chapter created as a 24th founding of the Imperial Fists. While it is confirmed that their Primarch is indeed Rogel Dawn, it can't be confirmed which chapter they are descended from, for there is no record of which specific chapter the Mordecaisers' gene seed comes from. Some scholars believe the Mordecaisers descent from the Excoriators due to both chapters leaving their battle damage untouched. The Excoriators, however, deny any link to the Mordecaisers. Either way, the Mordecaisers are merely recorded as Sons of Dawn. Upon their creation, the Mordecaisers were sent to the far reaches of a galaxy, into the Ghoul Stars. Their destination was the Imperial starport Morgenschwach, located near Lunaphage, before the Malefactor's warp rift. The Mordecaisers' purpose was to patrol and defend the area surrounding the starport and warp rift. Fitting for a chapter descended from Rogel Dawn, the Mordecaisers take their duty seriously and defend the sector vigorously. Of course, when needed, the Mordecaisers will answer summons for aid all across the galaxy, especially when a fellow chapter of Dawn is in need. The Mordecaisers were created as a part of the 24th founding in the 39th millennium. Although the gene seed is of Imperial Fist origin, it is unknown if it is directly from the Imperial Fists or from one of the many other chapters of Dawn. Several traits of the Mordecaisers' gene seed point to the excoriators, though this is denied by them. Regardless, the Mordecaisers were recorded as Sons of Dawn and sent off to guard the untamed ghoul stars in the starport of Morgenschwach. Once they had arrived, the Mordecaisers swiftly set about engaging the pirate fleets and orc warbands that prowled the areas around the starport. It was only after their first decade of combat that the Mordecaisers established their identity. The entire chapter had deployed in answer to the sudden appearance of a Space Hulk near Morgenschwach. The Hulk was full of Chaos Renegades, ranging from pirates to heretic Astartes. The fighting was so grueling that every single one of the surviving Mordekaisers left the purged Hulk with significant armor damage and various wounds. However, rather than repair them, the chapter decided to bear the damage proudly. To them, the fact that they had survived, despite the wounds and damage, was a sign that they could survive anything the galaxy could throw at them. As such, the Mordekaisers refused to repair all but the most serious of damage and preferred to engage in void and boarding operations, relying on their inherent hardness and skill in close quarters to emerge victorious. Since then, the Mordekaisers have honored their craft, specializing themselves in void warfare and boarding operations, to the point of mastery. They became experts at boarding a ship and taking it out in a small window of time, clearing it of enemy occupants before scuttling it, and many of their ships became outfitted with Ursus claws. What's more, due to a lack of use for them, the Mordekaisers gave most of their vehicles away and kept only the dreadnoughts and aircraft. This came at a cost, as the Mordekaisers became over-specialized in their craft and were unable to perform in a siege or open ground battle as other chapters might. However, the Mordekaisers work just as well in the conditions of a hive city or urban zone. The Mordekaisers performed their appointed duty with extreme dedication, fueled by the hope that the Imperium's inevitable victory over the galaxy would come at any time, and they were determined to be there to see it, though at the same time they would gladly give their lives if need be, so that they may contribute to this victory. This is why, amongst the chaos of the Ghoul Stars, the Mordekaisers continue their duty. As the stewardship of the Morgenschwach continued, the Mordekaisers have made allies with other chapters that operate in the Ghoul Stars. Their most prominent allies are the Wolves of Retribution, another chapter of Dawn known for their zeal and love of fire, and, most recently, the Silver Ferns, a newly formed Primaris chapter, and the Star Wardens, a chapter who also specializes in Void Warfare. These chapters often fight together, where their deferring combat doctrines complement each other well. However, the Mordekaisers have foes as well, and there is one foe they hate most of all. In the 40th millennium, the Mordekaisers engaged a Death Guard host that had emerged in the Ghoul Stars and had taken over a space station near the Malefactor's warp rift. Although victorious, the Death Guard successfully damaged the systems of the space station and set it on a course into the warp rift. 
The Mordekaisers were forced to evacuate, but, alas, not all were able to escape before the station plunged into the rift. Perhaps two dozen Mordekaisers were trapped on the station. Within the Nurgletouch station, that was now amplified by the rift, the Marines suffered terribly as disease and insanity attacked them. They held on, in vain, to their belief to the Emperor and to their hope, but, in the end, they succumbed to Nurgle's embrace and underwent a revelation. These Marines saw how their hope for the Emperor's final victory was a lie. The Emperor was a dead corpse and the Imperium a dying wretch vainly clinging to life. The Marines despaired at this and vowed that they would put the Imperium out of its misery, granting it a mercy killing in the face of this uncaring galaxy. When the station finally re-emerged from the warp rift, the first of the desolate suns were unleashed. Foul plague marines who wore a perversion of their former colors and bled from their eyes and mouths. Then they set their sights on the Mordekaisers, who they saw as beacons of the false hope. The desolate suns soon made themselves known to their former brothers by attacking the nearby worlds around Morgenschwach with the aid of the venom spiders and the senseless noise warbands. Enraged at the news that their former brothers were corrupted, the Mordekaisers answered their challenge and engaged in a brutal war across the Magrin sector. Eventually, the Mordekaisers emerged victorious as the Venom Spiders and the Senseless Noise were wiped out, but the Desolate Sons escaped, swearing that they would have their revenge. The Mordekaisers themselves swore that they would destroy the Desolate Sons and avenge their once brothers. In M42, when the Great Rift split through the galaxy, the Warp Rift of Malefactus shuddered and spewed all sorts of demonic horrors from its maw. The Mordekaisers rallied to hold back the tide from engulfing Morgenschwach and the neighboring sectors. Despite their best efforts, they were slowly pushed back into the starport and casualties mounted. But as the Mordekaisers were preparing to face another wave, a fleet appeared led by none other than Rebute Gilliman, Primarch of the Ultramarines. From the ships came a new breed of space marine, the Primaris. With these reinforcements, the Mordekaisers drove back the forces of Chaos. The victory was hard-earned, for a quarter of the chapter had been slain. Gilliman recognized the valor of the Mordekaisers and honored their centuries of service while gifting them the technology to create new Primaris marines. This was not accepted gladly, however. The Mordekaisers were reluctant in accepting this new breed of Astartes. Marcus Stahlhelm, Kaiser of the chapter, secretly distrusted the Primaris, but, recognizing their tactical use and because refusing a Primarch was out of the question, accepted them. Even though the Primaris and Astartes work together in combat, tensions quickly brewed nonetheless. Many Mordekaisers feared that the Primaris were here to completely replace them, while several Primaris believed that they were far superior to the quote-unquote old breed. Tensions became so bad that Gilliman assigned a permanent detachment of three custodies to watch over the chapter in order to prevent any full-blown conflicts. However, at the Battle of Belmid IV, something changed. During the battle, several squad of Astartes and Primaris found themselves surrounded on board a Chaos vessel. They fought side by side against unending waves of demons and Chaos, and in fact, one Marine directly saved a Primaris's life from a heretic's chainsword. Soon the halls were stained with the blood of traitors and the Marines stood together in victory. As fate would have it, these squads contained the main stirrers of the tensions, both Astartes and Primaris, who now found respect for each other. They left the vessel and declared their brotherhood, putting an end to much of the conflict. Since then, the Mordekaisers have stood proud and continue to guard Morgenschwach against malefactors. With their extreme belief in a final imperial victory and their endurance, they strike down their foes with zeal. Recently, Kaiser Marcus took the 2nd, 3rd and 5th with elements from the 1st, 4th and 7th companies to Vigilus alongside the Wolves of Retribution and the Star Wardens. Their skills have been made useful in the battles above the planet as well as in the clusters of high sprawls. However, when the forces of Chaos appeared under the leadership of Abaddon the Despoiler, the Mordekaisers took heavy losses in the initial fight, losing half of their force before managing to fall back. 
the Mordekaisers mostly follow the Codex Astartes, save for a few deviations. Several titles are changed, as well as several unit loadouts. One notable feature is that the 7th Company is comprised entirely of Breacher Squads, an ancient configuration from the days of the Legions. The Mordekaisers use breaches to secure beachheads or engage in Zone Mortala's battlefields. Casualties are often heavy, which is why the breaches are often attached across the chapter rather than kept to their own company. The Mordekaisers also do not use Hellblasters, Interceptors or any of the Vanguard Primaris. The long-range plasma weaponry of the Hellblasters and the Interceptors' reliance on their jump packs are of little use in the tight confines of a ship, while the usually brutal and up-close combat situations mean that the lighter armor and purpose the Vanguard serve would be ineffective. As such, Hellblasters, Vanguard and Interceptor squads are only formed in the rare occasions when the Mordekaisers fight on a planet. Because of the close quarters fighting, long-range heavy weaponry is seldom used. Thus, Devastator squads take short-ranged heavy weapons like heavy flamers or multi-melters. Assault squads are deployed with jump packs and often sent in with flamers and shotguns along with the standard chainsword slash bolt pistol loadout. Many veterans favor the Storm Bolter and its effectiveness at short range. Like all Codex Astartes compliant Space Marine chapters, the Mordekaisers are divided into 10 companies, comprised of 100 Marines each. Each company is led by a hero of the chapter with the rank of Hauptmann, who, in addition to his company command, is in charge of a particular aspect of the chapter's logistics. Due partly to prejudice and a small number of psychers within the population, the Mordekaiser's librarius is rather small. The Mordekaiser librarians make use of their psychic powers to strengthen their battle brothers, healing grievous wounds or erecting psychic walls against incoming blows. Rarely, a librarian may have the ability to see a few seconds into the future. Such an ability can mean the difference between life and death, or even between victory and defeat. Combat Doctrine the Mordekaisers are masters of void operations, ship-to-ship -ship combat and boarding operations. They also prefer to engage in close-quarters combat using close-ranged weaponry such as melters and shotguns due to the nature of ship warfare. The Mordekaisers also make use of their battle-damaged armor to cause a psychological impact. Again, due to the confined nature of boarding operations, the Mordekaisers issue long-ranged weaponry due to their ineffectiveness in a close-ranged environment. It is for this reason that assault squads do not deploy with jump packs and also why the Mordekaisers do not employ Hellblasters, Reavers and Interceptors. The former because of the dangers of using heavy plasma and fire and the latter too because there is little need for stealth or jump pack deployment. The Mordekaisers also make use of the ancient Breacher formation from the days of the Great Crusade. The Breachers are made up of the most headstrong and hardy of the chapter, armed with devastating close combat weaponry. They are the first into every breach in order to clear the path for their brothers. Many of them are armored in Mark III armor due to its effectiveness in ship-to-ship -ship combat. The Mordekaisers have little use for rhinos and various patterns, using them only for breachhead protection. In fact, the Mordekaisers don't even have a single land raider, for such vehicles are of little use to them. Instead, the Mordekaisers make heavy use of dreadnoughts due to their ability to act as walking heavy support. Strangely, the Mordekaisers have four Contemptor dreadnoughts and two Leviathan dreadnoughts, a rare number of ancient walkers, especially for a chapter formed so long after the Great Crusade. The Leviathan Dreadnoughts are released only in the most dire of circumstances that are might highly effective in the claustrophobia of a Zone Mortalis battlefield. For all their skill in void combat, it is perhaps also the Mordekaiser's biggest weakness. Their specialization has made them weaker in any other theaters of combat and they perform poorly in open warfare or sieges. As such, they are relegated to supporting Imperial forces in orbit and engage enemy fleets. This does not face the chapter, for not only do they relish the chance of fighting in a ship, their skills are just as useful in the confines of a hive city. A typical Mordekaiser battle plan is to ensure that an enemy vessel is boarded and cleared as quickly and efficiently as possible. 
Once a breach is made, breaches will pour in to clear a path, and they will usually be supported by Devastator squads or aggressors. The Devastator squads make use of heavy flamers, multi-melters and heavy bolters to provide firing support, while aggressors are used as a heavy support. Once the way is clear, intercessors will arrive and act as line holders, while tactical and assault squads swarm in. Teleporter homers will be placed to allow Terminators to teleport in and strike into the heart of the enemy. This has been the base of several Mordekaiser battle plans and has been effective many times. Several ships in the chapter fleet are outfitted with Ursus Claws, which allow them to catch vessels and reel them in for easy boarding. When Mordekaiser's campaign with other chapters, they tend to perform well, but have a tendency to get very competitive with chapters who also specialize in void warfare. The Mordekaisers will try and outperform the other chapters in boarding and destroying more ships than any other. Those who manage to best them will earn their respect as well as a vow for a rematch. The first thing an observer would notice of the Mordekaisers is their tendency to bear all but the most serious of battle damages, scars and markings. A single Astartes would need at least five dents, scratches and marks on his armor before he would call himself a true Mordekaiser. The drawing of a face with X's for eyes and either a smile or frown is common. A tradition inherited from the gangers of Morgan Schwach that held that the faces warded off death. The reason for this is that the Mordekaisers believe that they are nigh unstoppable, their superhuman endurance even more pronounced as Sons of Dawn, and discipline making them forces to be feared. They believe that their battle damage signifies that they can survive whatever comes before them. This extends to the reverence the Mordekaisers have for dreadnoughts, even after the most grievous of wounds still serve proudly. The Mordekaisers are also known for their extreme sense of brotherhood to their parent chapter and other chapters who share their blood. Whenever a chapter of Dawn is in need of aid, the Mordekaisers will rush to their call if they can. Another belief that the Mordekaisers hold close is their hope for a better future. The Mordekaisers genuinely believe that the Imperium will eventually triumph and rule the galaxy and they want to be there to see that victory. The Mordekaisers fight valiantly in the hope that tomorrow will bring the inevitable victory of mankind. The Mordekaisers are also known for their rigid discipline. When not in battle, the Mordekaisers patrol the sectors around Morgenschwach. They also insist on doing many tasks that most chapters have served to do. The Mordekaisers will clean their quarters and ships, cook their meals and maintain their war gear and armor. This is to instill a sense of duty and discipline with the Astartes and to prepare them for post-service when they are no longer needed, once the Imperium is victorious. The Mordekaisers regularly walk amongst the people of Morgenschwach. Ever since their arrival, the first chapter master, Wilhelm, made it a point that the Mordekaisers shall be known to their wards and maintain good relations. These interactions are so commonplace that, where any other citizen would quake in the fear at the sight of an Astartes, particularly one in a damaged armor, a citizen of Atlantis would barely bat an eyelid. In fact, group of Mordekaisers frequently go out into the port to visit places or lend assistance. These groups will either patrol the halls, keep with repairs, or even help in cleaning the area. Whatever it is, the Mordekaisers will gladly help. From the heritage of their progenitor, the Mordekaiser's gene seed is very stable and has never exhibited signs of mutation. However, over time they have lost the use of two of their special organs produced by the basic Astartes genetic template. The Betches gland, which allows a space marine to produce poisonous or acidic spittle, and the Susan membrane, which allows an Astartes to enter a state of suspended animation. Being Sons of Dawn, the Mordekaisers are able to take a large amount of punishment, a fact they are not afraid to show in the state of their armor. Superficial things, scrapes, dents and the like are ignored and several occasions where Mordekaisers have fought on with terrible wounds have been recorded. These facts point to their supposed origins from the Excoriators, a chapter of Dawn who are known to also bear their battle damage. But with the records lost and the excoriators' continued denial, none may truly know. Many chapters have flaws within them and the Mordekaisers are no different. They appear to suffer from what they call a fearful sleep. 
Every now and again, a Mordekaiser will dream that they are Rogaldorn himself, walking through the halls of the vengeful spirit. They can feel his fear as he traverses the halls, slaying all in his path until he finally reaches Horus's chambers. But at the moment he walks in, the dream ends and the Mordekaiser is left with a bad feeling in his heart. This dream is generally regarded as a bad omen. All space marines are the product of their genetic inheritance, benefiting from its blessings as well as suffering from its shortcomings, and the Mordekaisers are no different. Their Primarch was a deeply devoted warrior who fought tirelessly at the right hand of the Emperor, but even this towering exemplar had his flaws, as he himself is known to have acknowledged. Perhaps because of his dedication, Dawn was devastated when the Emperor fell, and shouldered far more than his fair share of the blame. He cast himself into a crusade of redemption that only ended in the terrible crucible of the Iron Cage, reforging the Legion in the bloody furnace of war. Dawn's glorious legacy lives on through the Imperial Fists, but so too does his curse. This usually occurs in three levels. Level 1 suffer not failure. The battle brother believes himself deficient in some manner, whether real or imagined, and becomes truculent and obstructive when ordered to redeploy in the face of a stronger foe. When acting as a squad leader or Death Watch kill team leader, he makes demands of his squad that others might consider unreasonable, and views any disagreement as outright disobedience. Level 2. Beware Hubris. The Battle Brother spends his every waking moment brooding on past battles, seeking even the slightest flaw in his own deeds and those of others. While he stops short of outright criticism of his Battle Brothers, he condemns his own actions as falling short of the example set by his Primarch and seeks to redeem himself in the fires of battle. Level 3. None are flawless. The Battle Brother obsessively reviews every detail of every mission he takes part in, finding fault with his own action and those of his squad. He becomes withdrawn, maudlin and confrontational, and unwilling to accept or issue any order that does not result in imminent battle. Instead of having a homeworld, the Mordekaisers make their base of operations on the starport of Morgenschwach, a port in the Ghoul Stars near the Malefactor's Warprift. Morgenschwach is where the chapter docks their ships, the chapter themselves specifically residing in a fortress within the port. The port is a maze of small tunnels ruled by gangs who bear oil-painted markings to identify themselves. Thus, they are perfect sources of recruits for the Mordekaisers. The Mordekaisers' fleet is quite large, boasting three battle barges, ten strike cruisers and numbers of escorts. This makes them incredibly devastating in fleet battles. Several of the ships are outfitted with Ursus Claws, which allows them to cripple ships and reel them in for boarding. Fittingly, all but the most superficial of battle damage is repaired, giving the ships a rugged look. Unfortunately for the enemy, the Mordekaiser's ships are still very effective. The Mordekaiser's batch is a damaged skull with a crown. To them, it's a perfect representation of their name, which means, when translated to High Gothic, Murder Lords, a name the Mordekaisers are keen to live up to.